Welcome in honor of Women's History Month 2022, the Black Faculty Task Force and Ethnic Studies Department of Delta College proudly brings you the Amari series. This is session one, Women Warriors, Sylvia and Felicitas Mendez. The name Amari means eternal, immortal, strength, and power. It can be traced back to a number of different origins, including Africa, Greek, Hebrew, Hindi, India, and more. We titled this series Amari to represent the eternal strength and power of women throughout the world and throughout history. When we consider school desegregation in America, what comes to mind may typically be the images that reflect the civil rights movement. For example, brave little Ruby Bridges, who at just six years old was the youngest African-American child to integrate a New Orleans school in 1960. Or we might think of the Little Rock Nine, of Little Rock, Arkansas, who faced harassment and fury as they integrated Central High in 1957. The courage of these young activists is a testimony and example of fortitude for all Americans to learn from and honor. The Brown versus Board of Education case of 1954 that deemed racial segregation as unconstitutional changed education in powerfully good but also detrimental ways for African-American students and educators. While black students were finally admitted into previously all-white schools with many privileges and benefits that they didn't have previously, tens of thousands of black teachers and administrators lost their jobs as a result of integration, permanently upsetting the presence and numbers of African-Americans in K-12 education ever since. Common notions of the negative and dark period of segregation in America's schools tend to evolve around the South. What is surprising to many, however, is the very ugly and real history of school segregation, racism, and prejudice right here in California. These images depict the harsh reality for not only black students, but also Mexican, Native American, Chinese, Filipino, and Japanese students as well over the past century, who were also relegated to separate, substandard, and discriminatory education from San Francisco to San Diego. Signs like these are everlasting reminders of the sheer ignorance, cruelty, and oppression against people of color in our nation. One city in particular that played an integral role in California's racist past is Westminster, Orange County in Southern California. Regardless of citizenship, Japanese, Filipino, and Mexican children were banned from white schools. In fact, 80% of schools were segregated, and non-white children were forced into run-down, impoverished schools and classrooms where they were trained for labor, not academics. In fact, racist and discriminatory school policy in California dates back to 1855. By the 1860s, Blacks, Asians, and Indians were all denied admission to white schools. While Blacks were granted the right to attend mixed schools, however, Chinese and Indian children were denied the right to enroll until as late as 1945. At that time, Mexican children were not written into the legislation at all. All of this information brings us to the case at point and to our Amari hero of honor, Felicitas Mendez. Felicitas was born in Juncos, Puerto Rico, and moved with her family to Southern California as a preteen. In California, she was often mistakenly labeled as Mexican. And as a young lady, she became an agricultural worker in Orange County. Felicitas married Gonzalo Mendez, a Mexican-American farm worker, and together they had three children, 
Sylvia, Gonzalo Jr., and Geronimo. They ran a neighborhood cafe and also a successful farm leased from a Japanese family who were forced into an internment camp at the time. In 1944, the children's aunt tried to enroll them in the neighborhood school. While their cousins, who were lighter in complexion, were allowed to enroll, Sylvia and her brothers were told they had to enroll in the Mexican school. Gonzalo Jr. recalls the only reason being is that their skin was too dark. We would all be in the same bus, the other children, and they would drop us off in front of the white school, this beautiful manicured lawn school with palm trees and a wonderful playground right there in the front with swings. And then we had to walk to the Mexican school. The school books were all handed down so they'd be torn. And we were being taught how to be good maids. We were being taught how to clean, how to sew, how to quilt. We weren't being taught academics. Felicitas and Gonzalo, furious at the denial of quality education for their children, decided to take legal action. In 1945, they hired a civil rights attorney and filed a lawsuit against four Orange County school districts. They were joined by four other Mexican-American families and also teamed up with LUCAC the League of United Latin American Citizens to help in their fight for more than 5,000 students in segregated schools. Shown here are images of the various documents compiled in their court cases. Felicita's leadership led to the organization of parent groups and committees that catalyzed the case action against Orange County Schools. She helped subsidize the cost of the lawsuit by profits from her family's farm. In her own words, I'm proud that at least we had the courage to do it, to fight not only for our children, but for the other children, and their children, and their children. The bravery and persistence of Felicitas and Gonzalo, along with the other families, paved the way towards the 1946 ruling that deemed segregation of Mexican children to be a violation of the guarantees of equal rights under the 14th Amendment. In 1947, all four school districts integrated their schools, leading to the desegregation of other Southern California regions as well. As a nine-year-old girl, all I was thinking is, when we went to court, that they were fighting for me to go to this beautiful school, never realizing exactly what they were fighting for. What was going on in Westminster was not right. 1996, has been in We had a, a judge in Los Angeles called Judge McCormick who said that separate is never equal. And it had like a ripple effect all over Southern California. The theaters were eventually integrated and housing became easier to move to different areas. And I'll never forget the first day I walked into that school and this little boy comes up to me and he says, you're a Mexican. What are you Mexicans doing here? Don't you know that Mexicans don't belong in the school? You're not supposed to be in the school. When that boy said to that to me, I felt this pain in my heart like somebody had stabbed me. I felt so so hurt, so humiliated that I started crying. I started crying and I go home and I tell my mother, mother, I don't want to be in that school. They don't want us there. They don't want Mexicans there. And my mother said to me, Sylvia, weren't you aware of what we were fighting for all this time? You were there in court every day. Don't you know exactly what we wanted for you? We wanted for you to know that you are just as equal as that boy. That's what we were fighting for you, to, for you not to feel humiliated, for you not to feel inferior, because under God, you're just as good as he is. 1947 marked the outline of school segregation in all California state's public schools. The Mendez versus Westminster case preceded Brown versus Board of Education by eight years and set the precedent that helped Brown succeed.
The Mendez case stood as the example from which other states, such as Texas and Arizona, followed in the ensuing years. Although many of us may not have been taught about Sylvia's bravery as a nine-year-old civil rights activist, she has certainly left her mark in history. She continued to attend Westminster after her court case and went on to earn degrees in nursing from CSU Los Angeles. She worked at the Los Angeles County University of Southern California Medical Center for more than 30 years. Upon her retirement, Sylvia continued as an activist, an educator, and a civil rights advocate. In 2011, she was awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom for her civil rights work by President Barack Obama. We are incredibly inspired to honor the sacrifices, strength, courage, and commitment of Felicitas, a mother who would stop at nothing to gain equity and justice for her children, and Sylvia, a little girl who had no idea that she would go on to lead a legacy for California and for the nation as a whole. The legacy of these women warriors is even reflected in a Google art image and a U.S. postal stamp. We're happy to share several lesson examples to help guide students into a more in-depth examination of the Mendez versus Westminster case and its impact on education even today. This lesson is provided by Learning for Justice, formerly known as Teaching Tolerance. This website provides at least four variations of lesson activities based on the Mendez case. These websites provide variations of lessons based on desegregation cases throughout history. For example, the Little Rock Integration Story, Brown versus Board of Education, 65 years later, Japanese School Integration, and Native American School Integration. Yet another lesson suggestion is the exploration of the Lao versus Nichols case, in which Chinese students fought for the right to be provided bilingual education and instruction in Californian schools. We thank you for viewing session one of the Amari series. Please stay tuned for the next session and may peace be with you always.